George Harrison spent most of his holiday here, virtually the only guest at a partly completed resort on Hamilton Island. With his wife Olivia and son Danny, he cruised the Barrier Reef in a luxury charter boat and took a few hours off to talk with Good Morning Australia. It was all a far cry from his most memorable visit down under, that frantic tour in 1964 when George was a fresh-faced 21. How would you describe yourself today, 1982? As uh, a middle-aged ex-pop star, I think. <laughs> Is that I, all? I, I don't really, um, I don't know. It's a sort of funny question, I suppose. Ex-pop star, um, peace seeker, gardener. Yes, you're... Ex-celeb, until now again, of course. Your own privacy, you obviously regard that very highly. And when John Lennon was murdered, how did that affect your lifestyle, more from a safety point of view or from an emotional point of view? I think from both points of view. First of all, it was, uh, I mean, obviously such a shock because assassination is something which, you know, up, up until that time hadn't really got down to the that level. I mean, it was always presence and leaders like that. And uh, I wouldn't think, you know, somebody who's a pop star was important enough to kill. You know, it's a terrible thing. I don't think anybody is important enough to kill, you know, really. And I, but I can see why, you know, those assassinations with political leaders and stuff, just extremists. And uh, obviously, if it could happen to him, it could happen to anybody, you know, who gets up on a stage or who walks out of a car. And, uh, you know, so it was a bit scary from that side. You can't go around worrying. I mean, I, I think of it like, say, a plane crash. There's a friend of mine who was terrified. I think we've all been through that, you know, fear of flying. A friend of mine was terrified of flying, and in the end he decides to go to a psychiatrist. And instead of the psychiatrist saying to him the sort of thing you would expect, he said to him, it doesn't matter if you crash, you're not important. <laughs> Which is true, really. It's like it's an ego thing of, I am going to crash. Me, I'm so important that I'm going to crash. But really, you know, that's another way of looking at it. You're not that important, don't worry. You know, it's... And the same thing goes for that, you know, for assassination. I, I would like to think, you know, I'm not that important. While he might be worried about protecting himself, George has been keeping an eye on this man, John Lennon's son, Julian. As he told us about Julian, George revealed some surprising things about the character of John Lennon. Things that he wouldn't like to see carried on by Julian as he launches his own career. Julian happens to be very talented. He's really good. Uh, he's got a lot of good tunes. He's only just started to try and do lyrics. But he, apart from him physically looking like John a bit, with his glasses and long hair, he really isn't anything like John. He's more like his mother. He's much a gentler, softer person. John was like very tough. Mm. I mean, he had that ability to be gentle and soft and was lovely. But he was, you know, he was acid too. I mean, that, he, he gave that hard edge to the Beatles. Why do you think that was? What gave well, that it, tough edge? In well, his it may be because the way he was you know, a sort of um, an orphan, <laughs> as Papa I would say, he was an orphan, you know, he, well, I mean, he didn't, his, his father left home, and I you know, like you heard the songs, Mother, you left me, but I didn't leave you. But, uh, you know, John was a real, uh, you know, much harder, tougher person. Julian is, you know, gentle and 
so I don't think there's any comparison and it's unfortunate that you know that Julian is allowing himself to be uh, you know interviewed or put in the newspapers and all that 